She loves to clean the stalls. She can whip up a hook and pick that baby. And I'm over there still a little nervous of horses, right? She's my horse girl. Um, she loves to clean them. She loves her horse family. She loves all the things horses. Everything horses. She loves to ride. Um, sorry. We love this ranch. Her first horse was Lincoln. And we, she especially cried when he got retired. She loves Sissy. That's her horse now. She loves Sissy. We waited for two years. She waited to turn seven so she could join the summer horse camp. And then we jumped into group lessons because um, I needed to save a little money versus individual lessons. And she was junior show prep, and she finally made it to her very first open show in October. And she won first place! <laughs> My daughter's been writing, competing, and taking classes at Highlander Ranch for over six years now. She spends every moment that she can at that ranch. The bond that she has with her horse and the people that work there is something I don't think you can understand. These people work. They are up before the sun rises and they are there long after it sets. These are the people and the students that you should invest in. What message are you sending her? What do I tell her when she's heartbreaking? When her dreams are getting away? When her horse is sold? And when her coaches are left jobless? On behalf of my daughter. The truth is, I'm angry. I'm angry at the people that may not know very much about the ranch and probably never even been there or making a decision on whether to keep or sell it. Something that is so very important to me. The ranch means more to me than you can imagine. It holds hearts. It has my heart. Where other people see just a horse, I see my best friend. The ranch is everything. But it's not just about the horses and the friends that I've made here. The ranch has taught me more than you could ever teach in a classroom. I want to say I grew up at the ranch. Enjoy my horse means the world to me, so I beg of you. Do not take my sunshine away. Mosquito ISD recently passed a bond to upgrade our middle school and high school facilities. As part of the building program, we did allow for future student growth. Our concern, however, is that the Highlander Ranch is sold for residential development. It would greatly impact the school district's ability to have adequate room for our students in the future. Because I do love horses, I have had an Arabian horse farm here for many years. As a matter of fact, the first Arabian horse I ever got, I bought from Gerald Crack. And he's the dude that Ben, ben Wood farms here, is, is later from um, Highland Ranch. I doubt Brother McCracken would be happy to know that that gorgeous facility that he bought is going to be turned over to some developers to buy those houses and roads on. You sell it, you get the money, folks, but then it's gone. This horse farm here is here forever. And so I really, really think that uh, Lisa Lacey and some of them made a great idea, had a great idea. Let's study this a little while. We don't want to go to a bunch of horse lovers influence the board here and uh, run all over you. So they'd rather this be an emotional, cerebral thing to keep this facility. It is just absolutely fabulous. Thanks. Um, it's a really difficult situation to be in. There's a lot of aspects of Highlander Ranch that are great. Um, but then, as a board member, you also have to kind of separate the emotional part of this. And you start looking at the, the facts, the numbers, and the dollars. And so, as a board member, it's a responsibility to all the community, not just a, a subset of the group that has a, a highly vested interest out there, whether it be primarily, I would say, in the, the boarding aspect. Uh, when you look at the individual components of the ranch, the operations and the vet tech 
are the two programs or the two items out there that are continually operating in the deficit. When you look at the continuing education and the very small agricultural piece, those have been showing a positive. They're paying for themselves. But if this was just a one-time deficit number that we were trying to overcome, that would be a very simple answer in my opinion. But what you're faced with here is just from 2024 to 2027, for Highlander Ranch as a we're talking about a million and a half dollar deficit. Historically, it's been a deficit. Projections show it operating at a deficit. And so to me as a trustee, that's hard to, that's hard to justify. At the same time, I'm torn from this because there are many great programs that are occurring out there. We still haven't even explored your other things. You know, what some of y'all talked about, um, you know, the juveniles and, and the Methodist home and students at risk and, and those kinds of programs. Um, I don't know that we've done a great job in looking at all of the grants that are poss possible. Um, I'm a, I just know that uh, experiential learning is very important, especially for our children today who seem to live on our tablets. Uh, and phones, but these are the kind of things that we need to meet the kids where they are. We need to meet our students and community where we are. But we can't do this by ourselves. I've heard a lot of wonderful uh, offerings, opportunities, and suggestions. Um, so at this point, I, I really feel like we need to, to, I agree, Ricky, we need to make sure that this emotion is not just emotion, but it is really conviction and commitment, um, the passion. Um, I'm a passion for education, so I'm going to fight for that. But you could help us in bringing different perspectives. It, it has been difficult and it's been complicated. Uh, from from what I've heard, I think there's a need uh, from the board side of things to pivot our thinking uh, as Highlander Ranch as a separate entity and think of it as an extension of our campus. Um, I think there's a number of opportunities that are available. Um, I, I think even beyond that, though, um, you know, Earl has a stack of cards there uh, of everyone that spoke. And so, if part of our action is to uh, to form any kind of advisory council, I mean, that's the roster. Okay, uh, if you spoke here tonight in favor of the ranch, uh, I mean, that's your your charge from here. Uh, and I know that there are are plenty of people who are willing to step up, some that weren't able to speak, and so bring them along too, if that's the way we end up going. I move that we commit long term to retain the ranch with the instructional programs with additional investments and teach on down the road. Thank <laughs> you.